Good morning. Good morning. And welcome on this first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of our new church year. So it's very exciting that we can all gather this morning. And um, whether we're here in the sanctuary or joining via Zoom, welcome everyone. And just a few announcements. Um, we do have childcare available for our pre-K and younger children in classroom five. And um, so anyone who um, would like to take advantage of that, we have that available every Sunday morning with two of our child care providers. Um, also, we have uh, church school in classroom three, but we are all gathering here first for the lighting of the Advent wreath, or the, the candle on the Advent wreath, I should say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, so the first candle on the Advent wreath. Um, this Wednesday, uh, December 6th, for the Feast of St. Nicholas at 6 p.m., there's going to be an evening prayer service in uh, classroom 6 and via Zoom. So um, we ask, um, you know, if you'd like to join us for that, please feel free. And that is being co-sponsored by the Hackensack Education for Ministry group. So you can speak with... Um, Chris Paulino or, or Jeffrey Kist about that if you're interested. Um, we still have a few of our advent calendars left. If anyone would like to take one, they're at the um, by the door or by the side door here. And these are thanks to Kelly Wilson. And they're very sweet. They're very cute. They have um, little ideas and prayers um, for, for each day of Advent. So please feel free to take one home with you. Um, and um, for upcoming events, um, we will have an Advent series on Zoom on Thursday evenings, three Thursday evenings, beginning this Thursday with Father Jim. And the theme this year is uh, Becoming Everyday Mystics. And that will be from seven to eight on Zoom. And then everyone is invited um, to uh, join us for Compline right after that at eight o'clock. But that is three Thursdays um, beginning this, this Thursday. On um, the 15th of, um, right, is that going to be the date? It's a Sunday. Sorry, I am having a <laughs> 17th, the 17th, yes, it's a Sunday. We are going to be, um, as a group from St. Mark's, going to see the Nutcracker, which Miss Carrie, <clears throat> Miss Carrie has been working very, very hard on with, um, with all of your your dancers um so we thought it would be fun for us to go as a group from um saint mark's so please see the e-news for that also kate um had put together a flyer for that and um so please feel free to talk with kate if you'd be interested in doing that on sunday the 17th at two o'clock is is the performance time um, and then just uh, the announcement that also on the 17th, a very busy day, immediately following the service, we will be putting up our pew torches in anticipation for Christmas Eve and the Christmas season and um, setting up our creche out on the lawn and having hot chocolate and, and cookies and a very festive um, coffee hour for that as well. So just a heads up on that. And um, so thank you. Thank you all for being here. There are many announcements in the e-news. Please be sure to check your e-news. If you are not currently receiving e-news, um, please let me or Yana um, is one of our wardens or, or Marsha, I know Marsha's here as well. Please just let us know and we'll make sure to get your email and, and get you on the e-news e distribution list. 
so um, so thank you. And I would like to invite up um, Father Michael, who's going to be doing our stewardship update for this morning. All week I've been thinking how to start this, and what I really wanted to do was the daily report from the Lion King. So, so between statements, you have to sing the chorus. <laughs> Okay. So, as of yesterday, we have 49 pledges for a total of $173,400, and we thank you for all who have pledged this year so far. Uh, the pledges represent about 69% of the pledges we got last year. And so we still are waiting for more pledges to come in. One of the good news is though, is that it also represents, even though it's 89% of the pledges from last year so far, it's 83% of what we collected. And so it looks like, the, to me, it looks like the pledges have gone up. So that's, that's a, a good thing to happen in, in this world. Uh, if you have not submitted your pledge, we please ask you to do that. As a pastor for years, I realized one of the most difficult things in managing a church is not knowing what's in the budget. And the budget is going to be prepared in two weeks and submitted to the vestry. So if you can get your pledge done, please do it. It's really helpful to the congregation and to the people who manage it every day. Uh, The treasurer wants us to know that a pledge is annual and that even though you pledged yet last year, you got to do another pledge card. <laughs> and so it's kind of easy. So if you go to the website and you go to the home page and you scroll down about this far, you will see a gigantic red button that says 2024 pledge. And you just push that and you can pledge online. If you don't like that or uncomfortable with that, there are pledge cards mm -hmm. here. I don't know who to ask specifically, so I figure you ask the wardens, you ask the rector, and you ask the treasurer, and they'll get one to you. Uh, the, the other thing that the treasurer asked is that uh, you can pledge your donations online so that you don't have to, you know, make sure you've got the money, the envelope or whatever, every, every week or every month. And it's very easy to do too. I had never tried to do it, but this, this morning I clicked on, uh, on donations and it's on every page of our website and it takes you to a place where you can just send your money in. So those are a couple of easy things to do. Uh, I'm not used to giving these reports. I'm more used to doing a theological <laughs> kind of understanding of all that. And I guess as a clergyman, I kind of have to, can't leave without doing something. And uh, you know, where your treasure is, where your, is where your heart is also. And I, a couple of years ago, I realized that I was pledging less to the church. This is a lot, two decades ago, probably. I was pledging less to the church than what I paid for cigarettes I used to smoke. And I asked myself seriously, where's my treasure? And it shouldn't have been in the cigarettes. And I got much more out of the church than I ever thought I could or would. And so think about that as you make your pledges this year. So again, thank you so much for those who are pledged. Please, we ask you just to make things a little bit easier for the administrators to get your pledge in when you can. I think that's it. Is that it? Is that it, Rich? Um, and let us stand for our Advent Antiphon, please.
Advent wreath, and I would like to invite our, our church school students and, and teachers um, to, if they would like to help with this. So we'll have the, the prayer first, and then we'll ask if you would like to help Mr. Jeffrey Kiss with the lighting of, of the candle. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Blessed be God, who gives us light in the darkness. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory made flesh and visible to us in your son jesus christ bless this wreath of evergreens and candles and be present among us as we prepare to joyfully receive our savior for to you all honor and blessing are due now and forever amen, amen. and would you like to help mr kiss Wow, yay. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as a testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, lead the throne of In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered, despite the prayers of your people? You, ha you have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and make you shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man who has made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, <clears throat> In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, 
for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going out on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or cock crow or at dawn or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Amen. Amen. Well, again, Happy New Year on this first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new liturgical year. We begin our church year in waiting, not with the triumph of Easter or the excitement of Pentecost, but we begin in a place of yearning. Advent, which we know means coming, and is a time set apart, a time of anticipation and preparation for the coming of Christ, past, present, and future. And although the seasons of Lent and Advent <clears throat> both have a penitential thread running through them, I have always found it helpful, the analogy that Lent is more like a deep spring cleaning, while Advent is more like getting your home ready for a special guest. There is the preparation, the excitement, the expectant waiting, and the hopeful anticipation. And the special guest is Christ. And as Christians, we believe in the coming of Christ and the incarnation. Jesus, born of Mary, who taught and healed, was crucified and resurrected. And in the coming of Christ and what the scriptures term the last days, Christ coming in power and great glory. And in the coming of Christ in our present moment, through the Holy Spirit's work in the world and through us and through word and sacrament, Advent celebrates and holds together all three of these comings of Christ. And this time of Ad Advent can be seen by some as just a ramp up to Christmas or just part of that holly jolly season when everything is supposed to be merry and bright. And even we can be so familiar with the story of Christmas that we fail to notice the depth of the pain, the chaos, and the danger of the world into which Jesus was born all the tragedies, misery, confusion, ignorance, and pain of that world remain with us now. And in Advent, I think it's important to first acknowledge the darkness in our world and in our own lives. Important to make space for our own mourning and lamentation. As we sang in our opening hymn, we wait in lowly exile here 
until the Son of God appear. But we also wait in expectant hope. We look for the places in our own lives and in our world where we yearn for Christ to come, the places where we need hope, help, deliverance, in hope, because we look for the coming of Christ, not only in the incarnation, but in our daily lives. His work continues in us, through us, and all around us. For the hymn's refrain is, rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee. We wait in hope for something new and unexpected to be born within each of us. And Advent is a season when we practice watching for moments, for glimpses of God's grace. Anglican priest Tish Harrison Warren reflected, I often forget how to wait on the Lord. I begin to believe that I am the master and maker of my own life. I begin to believe that joy is self-made through my own ingenuity and hard work. I begin to believe that the things I long for are within my grasp. If only, if only I can master the mad task of controlling my own life. I begin to believe that I am the engineer of my own deliverance. And into these fevered deceptions, Advent comes each year and quietly asks me to pause, to remember that we do not bring the kingdom of God to the world through our own effort alone or on our own timeline. We wait for one outside of us and outside of time. Advent asks us to name that which is dark in the world and in our own lives and to invite the light of Christ into each shadowy corner. And I feel that this year especially, I am lamenting war, destruction, death, division, all around our globe, our nation, and division in our communities. And I pray, pray, pray for peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Good Lord, deliver us. Through all the various demands and expectations we might feel in these weeks of Advent, what is one small thing that we can do throughout our day that might help us to keep grounded in this time of yearning, yearning for peace, this time of preparation, anticipation, and hope, grounded in preparing our hearts for the coming of the one who offers us a light in the midst of very real darkness. And this can be a very small thing, perhaps saying a line or a phrase from a favorite carol or canticle, O come, O come, Emmanuel, or saying the prayers and lighting the candles of an Advent wreath in the middle of your kitchen table. I like to keep small things in my pockets, on the shelf above my kitchen sink, 
next to my table, on my desk. I have a lot of little gatherings of small things. And some of those small things are little stones that people have given me, or little notes, or a little cross, just any little things. Little things that are reminders to me that I am not alone, that others are with me, that God is with me. And this year, I invite you to take one of these little small blue stones that we have here on the altar. I have to admit, I have one in my pocket already. But I invite you, following our service, if you would like to keep one in your pocket or on the shelf above your kitchen sink, or on the little table next to your bed, please come up and take one. I like to think of these as little, little bits of peace to remind us that we are not alone, that we are all together, that we are all praying and that we are all carrying a bit of God's peace with us and within us. That we are all waiting, praying, and working for that peace of God, which passes all understanding. That peace to be with us and to be with our world. God with us. Emmanuel, keep awake, Jesus tells us throughout our reading from the gospel today. Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. No, we do not know when, but we do have Jesus' promise that although heaven and earth will pass away, his words will not pass away. God, the ground of all being, is the only constant. So a few weeks ago, we had the Teaneck Interfaith Community Thanksgiving gathering. One of the people I met there and spoke with for a while was a Jewish woman. And when we were talking about our congregations, and I mentioned that I was from St. Mark's, the church behind Holy Name Hospital, because she said, oh, St. Mark's, where is that? And it's just a miracle whenever I say the little church behind Holy Name, everyone immediately knows us. <laughs> so when I told her the church behind Holy Name Hospital, she immediately thanked me. And she told me of how in the beginning of the pandem pandemic, when things were especially so very, very awful and terrible, that she was able to meet a friend on our grounds. And they were able to meet on our grounds and talk and support each other. And she said, you have no idea how much your beautiful space meant to us. And she said, I am so grateful to be able to say to you, thank you. And please let your congregation know Thank you. What a beautiful space of peace you have. So thank you. And thank you to all of you who work so hard to keep those grounds as beautiful as they are. What if one of the reasons that Jesus tells us to keep awake is so that we will not miss these experiences of the holy among us, 
the very nearness of God to keep awake so that in gratitude, not fear, we may prepare our hearts for the coming of holiness. I think I've probably told you this before, but at Advent, I always think of my mother. My mom was 94 and a half when she died, and probably for the last six, could have been eight years, she always thought that this could be her last Christmas. And she, because of that, was always so very, very present to the special moments of Advent, to the special events of Advent, and then to Christmas. And so I always hold on to that, that it was in hope and in thankfulness and appreciation that she was able to be fully present to those Advents and to those Christmases. May we be so fully present. Keep awake, keep awake. May we prepare our hearts to receive the peace of God, to receive the holy moments, to receive the light of Christ who has come, who will come, and who continues to break into our world, even in the midst of very real darkness, but the Christ who breaks in in unexpected ways at unexpected times. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us offer prayers to God who stirs up strength and comes to help us. Prayers of the people, let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for all Christians everywhere, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Carly, for our priests Joan and Jim, and for the family of St. Mark's. Gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all your people as they work and witness in your, your world. Unite us in our faith and love and help us to show your love to others. God of love. Amen. We pray for peace everywhere. We look for creative solutions to the conflicts in Israel, Ukraine, and Sudan. 
May those who lead the nations of the world be given wisdom. We especially pray for Joe, Kamala, Phil, and Takesha, God of love. We pray for our community and for all who work in this area. God, our friend, we pray for our families and friends. May we be able to help each other as you love and help us. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Richard, Penny, Jelani, Nicholas, Danilo, John, Cynthia, Jacob, and Joshua, God of love. We pray for those in need, for those who are sick, for those in hospitals, and for those with any other problem. Compassionate God, give your strength and healing to all those who are sad, lonely, or sick. Bless those who support them. We pray especially for those on St. Mark's prayer list and prayer chain. God of love, we remember all who have died. God of hope, we thank you that not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for all who mourn, that they may feel your care for them. We pray also for the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives in our country this past week because of the senseless use of guns, including Lacey Nix, Springfield, Missouri, Maurice Baker, Jr., age six, and Jaden Lucas, age nine, <coughs> Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Joanna Lucille Bell, Little Rock, Arkansas. Daryl Bowie, Birmingham, Alabama. Ryan Devon Jones, Antioch, California. Shasta C. Gilmore, Grain Valley, Missouri. William Bonhart, Hart, Riverdale, Georgia. Janil Perez, East Orange, New Jersey. Dayon Darnell Lies. <coughs> Lyles, age 13, Indianapolis, Indiana. Antonio Martin, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Ana Gracia, Silmar, California. Bradley Haas, Concord, New Hampshire. Monte Taylor, age 16, Chicago, Illinois. And Barbara J. Cruz, Rehoboth, Massachusetts. God of love, grant we pray for ourselves, all that we will do this week, and all those we will meet. Loving God, we give this week into your hands. Be with us in all that we do. May we enjoy this week and learn and grow in it. God of love. Dear people of God, what else or whom else should we pray for? Thanksgiving for the gift of Chisaki's presence here with us. In the midst of chaos, I will be peace. In the heart of anger, I will be love. In the presence of despair, I will be hope. Those are my assignments, not imposed on me, but taken up willingly as a witness to what I believe is true for all of us. The circle of life needs and deserves peace, love, and hope. Our shared calling is to embody that grace, to live what we pray, to be the blessing we ask of others. Amen. King of all nations, only joy of every heart, keystone of the mighty arch who makes us one, come and save the creatures you have fashioned from clay. Glory to you forever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. It's Michael. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge God's name, but do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Please be seated. Thank you. 
may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, my highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we praise the Son of the Lord, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Mark and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As I say, the Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, and you have us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singing to heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Jesus Christ came upon us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.